Hi, I'm Spanky. Um, you're watching Brian's Mobile One. Uh, today we're doing uh, a video called Why Your Battery Died. Have you ever gotten up in the morning, get all rest ready for work, and you're maybe almost late, and you go out and turn the key, and absolutely nothing happens? Well, your battery is dead. So why does that happen? That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, there are three things usually that cause that. Okay, one of three things. And it's either it's old and busted, or it's sulfated on the inside. Um, there's a problem with your charging system, or your alternator, or your generator, which is the same thing. Um, and or there's a draw, which is also like a slow leak, and not like a leak like acid coming out. It's a, a energy draw uh, out of battery. The battery that comes with your new car doesn't last forever. Typically they only last anywhere from three to five years. Five years is a real long time. But what causes these batteries to go bad? Um, you, you can have a nice battery go to crap in about three months if it's not charged. If your battery's not fully charged, it can be sulfated. Every time you run your battery down, like leaving your lights on or something like that, does damage to the battery in the form of sulfations. Uh, sulfating can either be hard or soft. Um, soft, it's reversible within a uh, certain period of three weeks. If you let a battery sit for more than three or four weeks, then it's a hard sulfation. It's a crystal type uh, structure that forms on the inside and it causes you to lose capacity in the battery. And then basically it goes bad. Well, I see a lot of things, a lot of times people have a battery that just sits and goes dead over time, because they do if they're left hooked up but they'll sit for three months and they'll just get hard sulfated to the point where they're just completely toast. This could be a really nice $150 fancy pants battery, um, but if it's left dead, then that sulfation process can just kill the battery. It doesn't take very long at all. We've all seen corroded sulfated terminals. You know, like the lead gets uh, infiltrated with acid whenever your engine's hot or it's a hot climate outside. It causes your battery to sweat. It vents a little bit of acid, especially really cheap Walmart crappy batteries. Um, those tend to really just pull the acid on top. They're not made very well at all to begin with. Um, but then they just get to that lead and that acid and lead when there's not a charge, when they're not immersed in acid, it just causes them to uh, sulfate really bad. You get all that corrosion and stuff on there. So the same thing happens on the inside of the battery. It knocks it out and then you gotta get a new one. Okay, well if it's old and busted, the best way to get it tested is to take it out, call a friend, and say, hey, can you run me to the auto store? I need to get my battery tested. And they'll test it for you. It takes a few minutes and they'll let you know. Use of a $3,000 tool for free, you don't even know them, you yeah. say, okay. Yeah, say so thank you. So if it's old and busted, the easiest way to check it is just take it out of your car. Careful not getting acid on you if there is, it will leave holes in your clothes and take it to an auto parts store and uh, they'll test it for you for free. And they have really nice equipment and they'll be able to do a little test on it and see if it's sulfated on the inside or not. Um, and like I said, it's free, the best way to go as far as that goes. The second is um, your charging system. If your alternator isn't charging the battery while it's going. So you'll need to get a jump start or charge your battery up first so that you can get your car running because to test your alternator, your charging system, it has to be running. We're going to show you how to do that. Okay, so this is a voltage right now, um, 12.85 and that's fine. Uh, and so Ryan's going to start the track and we'll see it go up. As he revs it, it'll send more juice to it and it'll go up. Did you get it? I think so. And then finally, there's the draw of death. And this is oftentimes a problem, and uh, but no one knows how to find it. So that's what we're going to show you also today is how to find that draw on your battery. Okay, so we've got the multimeter hooked up to the battery from terminal to terminal so we can see what, exactly what the battery voltage is. And as you see, it's 12.5. Uh, and now I'm going to switch it down uh, to beverage, beverage? 
to measure the amperage uh, or flow of the electricity. So I'm putting it on DC direct current and I'm going to switch it and take it off of the positive battery cable onto the ground so it's in, now in line with the circuit. So you can see we've got our setup just the same as we have in the diagram on the negative terminal. We do it on the negative terminal because if you take off the negative one there's less chance of having the wrench or something arc onto something else. That's exciting. <laughs> So then what? Well, and as you can see, I can't. <coughs> but you can see that is. So as you can see here, we have it hooked up in line with the circuit. And there's a 90 milliamp draw on it. So something is draining that battery. We know that now. And so, you know, if you're going to take a shot in the dark, you'd say, oh, it's the ignition switch. Well, if you unplug the ignition switch, I can unplug the ignition switch, then it's the same. So it's not that. So I'll plug that back in. Or do it later. And um, there's all sorts of plugs and things. There's a fuse right here. Um, so it'll swing up. Pull that out. The change? No. So that's not the problem. Yeah, it did. It did? Yeah, it went to zero. Oh. Did this? <laughs> yeah. Let's let's try something else first. <laughs> okay. Let me uh let me <coughs> You're fine. I'm gonna be like, what'd you do? Okay. That was easy to pull out. I was like, uh oh. Okay. So the other thing I thought it was going to be is it's got all the safety stuff. The previous owner had a bunch of safety stuff undone and taped together. See this? For the seat kill so that if you stand up and get off the motor it turns it off. Oh, right. Mower. So I went through and I was looking through these first because I thought two of those were touching and draining the battery. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was thinking it was going to be back here and when it wasn't, I, you know, I started done playing with things. So you can see it's not the ignition switch. So let's try something else. Hmm. Oh, here's a fuse. Let's pull that. It's zero. So what does that mean? Do you know? <laughs> so okay. So why? <laughs> so, so what does that mean when you pull out the, <laughs> the fuse and it goes to zero? Well, that just means that from the fuse to the battery, uh, it's good. So it's after the fuse. So you got to travel down that road and see. So here's a whole bunch of wires. Let's pull this out. You have to narrow it down. It's a process of elimination. It's not that one. <laughs> <laughs> If you wiggle it, pinch those and then wiggle the whole thing side to side. Yeah, like that. There we go. Perfect. So <clears> what <throat> did that do with our meter? Well, it's open to zero, so it's some past, point past this. So we're going in the right direction. So moving on down the line, what's the next connection? Uh, there's a connection here. Okay. So we unplug that one. So by disconnecting any of these, it'll cause your battery not to drain. It's a lawnmower that gets used once a week. And so if you want it to sit for a week without doing major repairs or replacing parts, this will make it so that it'll last. It's just not super convenient to have to do that. So where does that red wire go? It goes in the engine. So Does it come out on the other side? Let's take a look. Quite possibly. Oh, here it is. <laughs> ah, Eureka. Uh, Eureka means that I found it, not I smell bad. Says you. Says you. you see that? It's okay, this isn't smell of vision. Alright, so now we're going to pull this red wire over here. Oh, let's see. They're worse than Chrysler connectors, aren't they? They're terrible. Pretty bad. There we go. Yeah. Just had to get my meals in there. 
So we look at that, that did cause it to drop. So we know that it's somewhere between the control module and the ignition coils. So now we're going to narrow it down a little further. We're going to plug that back in. Perfect. So go ahead and pull the control module off so that it's not grounded. And when we do that, we still have a draw. But let's disconnect the ignition coils now. There's two coils because this is the twin cylinder one. Bam, it drops. So it's either one of two things. It's either our ignition coils that are creating the draw, or it's our ignition control module that's creating the draw. So with our ignition coils unplugged, let's put the control module back to ground. As you can see, we still have a draw with the ignition coils completely removed from the scenario. So we know that the problem, or the draw in this case, is the ignition control module. Which is funny because this lawnmower, I got it used, this is the one that we did all the transmission videos on. And it's got all of the safety things disconnected and taped and hanging. And so those are all on the back of the machine. But we're able to track this down really quickly because we're able to see the flow. We're able to see the amperage. Multimeter. <laughs> just keep saying multimeter over and over again it gives you eyes to see what you wouldn't be able to you can't see electricity but if you have your multimeter ha ha you can now I've never seen a voltage regulator create a draw like that but it kind of makes sense because your voltage goes in through the regulator and to the battery but it's going backwards through there's some kind of um, you know like a check valve in vacuum or a control gate in water that's causing it to backflow or go back in through. On a car, you're going to have other things that cause you to have issues, and it's usually the radio or an alarm system or a light, like a dome light, a glove box light, trunk light, some light that's staying on or something that's switched on. So you want to go through and check these things first. Radio, it must be some kind of a half circle thing going on there. Radio. So I'll check these things. So I'd, I would start here. These are known things that really are common. So pull the fuse for the radio or the alarm or you know check the lights, pull the light bulb out <coughs> and see if that makes a difference for you. If it does, check it out. But you can see the flow of electricity or amateur or whatever. When you're doing this, um, you can have it, your uh, ammeter, your multimeter under the hood with you. Um, if you have fuse on the glove box, you can set it on the, the windshield or have somebody watch it for you, something like that. But uh, these are usually what it is. And if it's radio, it's usually the blue wire if it's an aftermarket one for a power antenna. P. Hey, power antenna, not public announcement. Um, or it's an orange wire for a dimmer wire or something like that that's grounding out or doing something dumb. Or even just your yellow wire for your constant power, your memory wire. Um, and as for the alarm, sometimes people will have a security system or alarm system on their car and then they'll take out the speaker because it's going off all the time. So they get rid of the speaker so you don't even know the alarm's going off but there's power that's being sent down the wires and it's creating a draw. So we've talked about uh, lights, alarm, radio, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes it's a door latch that's making the lights come on. So I hope this helps you to be able to figure out why your battery's dead, because that's annoying. That's a pain in the neck. Um, so anyway, be sure to rate, comment, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. Love you.